Hi there. Today we are making the famous <clears throat> Bailey Boys Salsa. Um, actually, famous isn't the word. Coveted, I think, would be the correct term. By a knowledgeable few. Uh, by everybody on this little island that we live on. So when our boys were little, um, Rob has a recipe, a salsa recipe that he's been making for a number of years. And when the boys were little and they wanted to start a business, uh, Rob taught them how to make salsa. And it started off with him using the food processor and then basically getting the ingredients together and helping. And then over time, they started to make it themselves and sell it themselves down at the market every uh, weekend. And they did that for a while and they were pretty darn cute selling their salsa and they sold out on a regular basis. Um, and then they even ended up, when, because the market was seasonal, um, they ended up selling in the winter months out of a local grocery store here. So they had Bailey Boy salsa in tubs uh, with ingredients written on it and all of that. And people, it often sold out. And There's people even say, a Facebook group. There is a Facebook group, but it's now dormant. We don't do that anymore because the boys don't do that anymore now that they're older, this is not something they want to be doing. So we decided now was time we could share the coveted Bailey Boy salsa recipe with you. Now, this is a fresh salsa, um, Mexican pico de gallo style salsa. Um, no claims to authenticity or whatever. This is, we love this with uh, corn chips, tortilla chips. And so I'm gonna show you how to make it's it. It's just good. It's just really, really good. And the thing that makes it great, well, partly it's a balance of the flavor, so all of the um, amounts will be down below. But the other thing that I think really makes it is that we have both jalapenos in here, and we also have chipotles and adobo. So two kinds of chilies, and that's what makes the salsa really, really good. So let's get started and make it. So we're using a handy dandy food processor here. I would not want to use a blender here because we are just going to pulse this. We do not want it to get soupy. We don't want it to be uniformly blended. We just want it chopped. Combined. You, you could do the whole thing chopping by hand. I had a friend in London who used to make his own salsa and he would laboriously mince every ingredient and put it together. You could do that, but don't use a blender because I think you'll ruin it. So we're starting out with some beautiful red tomatoes that we have here. And where are they from? Um, these happen to be out of our garden. These are Juliet Romas. They're, they're a small Roma tomato and we've had a spectacularly good year for tomatoes in the garden. So uh, hence making salsa. Um, your tomatoes don't have to be red. Um, they need to be ripe. So if your tomatoes are yellow or orange tomatoes, awesome. Or even those like black cream or, or one of those. So they don't have to be red, but they do have to be ripe because you need the flavor, okay? So in they go into the food processor. The next thing we're using is red onion, also sometimes called purple onion or Spanish onion, depending on where it is that you live. Um, it's not a huge amount, but it makes all the difference in the world. You can make this recipe with a yellow or white onion, but it won't taste as good. Go with the red if you can. So we're just gonna put that in there. Should we get it all out? Next ingredient is cilantro. Mm. Now also, depending on where you live, you may call this coriander. We don't mean the seed, obviously. We mean the green part of the plant. It is the same plant. Um, in North America, it's usually called cilantro. And stems are just as good as leaves. Exactly, so I have uh, roughly chopped this just like I roughly chopped the tomatoes and the, the onion. Um, and yeah, the stems are totally in there because they taste just as good as the leaf. And in this particular um, application, it doesn't matter at all. Next, we've got lime juice. Again, fresh, fresh lime juice. This is not a place to be going, hey, I think I'm gonna use something out of a bottle. Get yourself a lime, fresh lime juice. Da, 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 da. Okay, so here we have also homegrown this year jalapenos. All I've done is uh, cut open the chili pepper and I've taken out the membrane and the seeds. Now if you want your salsa hotter than this, I would say that this is a medium, mm -hmm. high medium maybe. Actually no, I'd call it medium. Yeah. Just I wouldn't call it high medium. I'd call this just a medium salsa. If you want your salsa to be hotter, go for it, add more. Um, 
The problem is medium means different things to different people. We've been in <laughs> restaurants and asked for medium and thought that what we got was incredibly lame and mild. We've also been in uh, and said medium and had stuff that was scorching hot. So go figure, right? I recommend making it this way and I will put a measurement down below. But again, jalapenos, some of them are super, not super hot. Some of them are hotter than others. So it's all going to be you trying to figure out what you like. You can always add seeds and membranes if you want it hotter. Then there's our second chili. The wonder ingredient. It is. Now this is a canned ingredient. It's called chipotles in adobo. Chipotles, yep. And I'm not endorsing that brand. That's just what we happen to have at the moment. So a chipotle is a smoked jalapeno. So you get this amazing dry, uh, smoky flavor to it. And it, the adobo is a sauce that also is smoky. Highly recommend always having a can of these in your pantry. They're not expensive and they add so much flavor. Mm. If this recipe, as, as I'm making it right now, is too hot for you, you could use half the amount. This is one whole um, chipotle, but you could easily do half if that works for you. It really is the heart and soul of this sauce. It is because it's what makes this different from any other fresh, pico de gallo style salsa that you might have somewhere else. So that's going in and make sure you get that lovely adobo sauce in there. And then our last ingredient is salt because you know, hey. Kosher of course, never iodized. Yes, we, we always it's use kosher salt. I would like to stress there. that. Um, Rob likes to put pepper in this. Fresh black pepper, yeah. Our um, eldest son, and I agree that black pepper doesn't have a place in salsa as much as I love it. Um, it does not belong here, so I'm not putting it in. <laughs> you do you. And now we're just going to pulse. Wrong kind of pulse. Let's have a look. So we're That's seeing that close. it's getting yep. chopped up, but we're not quite there because I'm seeing some pieces of both onion and tomato and even the cilantro stems, little bit bigger than I want them to be, but not much. So it's always good to stop and look, but the smell coming off of that already is great. Oh, I think you have done it. I think that's pretty darn good. So do. that's that's the texture we like a salsa to be. We feel like it. You can pick up with your chip really, really well. Now there may be one or two pieces in there that are a little larger than you like, but you know, get I think it. you'll get over it. Get over it. <laughs> anyway, so that is it. Put that in a bowl, surround it with some tortilla chips, and um, you will make your guests very, very happy. And see, you can buy salsa but why would you that was so easy and other than a little bit of chopping that i did off camera beforehand really this was not a lot of work you can make real food